guys. Hope everyone's having a good day so far. My name is Digi Chili. I am pretty certain I have not mentioned my name in the past videos, but here it is. So pretty much for this video it is going to be a little bit different. I'm just doing a voiceover of what I've cooked in the last weekend. So I cooked and made a beef stew. So this past Saturday, it was like fucking cold, like super cold outside. So I decided to make a delicious kind of hearty beef stew and it's just perfect for the weather. Also, we were kind of like hanging in the basement so it's even colder. So having this beef stew made was like the perfect choice. When it comes to cooking, I really enjoy cooking. Despite the fact that I don't really cook on a regular basis, back when I was living alone for a brief amount of time, I would cook every other day. And it was a nice kind of activity to do, basically. It was just a good reason to get away from my office desk, to be honest. Just because I'm literally sitting eight to nine hours in front of my computer working on some sort of task or some sort of project. And then there's probably like a few hours of editing my videos, for example. Cooking is just relaxing for me. I don't really find it stressful unless it's something that's brand new that I don't know how to do it or if it's something that's extremely complex. But the recipes that I've made in the past have been very simple, very easy, nothing, nothing too difficult. I'm very likely to actually finish whatever I made from scratch as opposed to something that is frozen for example that I need to put in the oven or the microwave. In conclusion, I enjoy the experience. To me, cooking is very rewarding when you make it from scratch, at least to me, in my opinion. So first things first is that I chopped up all the uh, onions, or actually just one onion in this case, and it was pretty huge, so I just cut them up, diced them, tossed them in the pot here, and I just kind of made sure that they're all cooked all the way through. I just cooked them up for, for four to five minutes. And after that, I kind of checked in all the beef here. I had to kind of move them around, kind of swirl them around the pot here. I had to make sure that the outside at least is somewhat cooked like it has to look like it's like kind of like a light brown color and that's what it does say in the recipe that i've used for this eventually you start seeing each cube or cut being brown it does take a while just because i have so many onions in this pot here so it took maybe a good five to ten minutes i would say to make sure that yeah, most of the stuff is brown. It's all good to go. After all the little beef cuts or beef chunks are pretty much browned on the outside, the next thing I do is I bring out the beef mixed with red wine. So this is much, much easier to kind of use for broth. You could just find this at any grocery store. It's pretty much like something you could find at Walmart or Loblaws or whatever is available within your area, so pretty much I used two of these. It asked for six cups, I believe, from what I remember, and then there's like still a little bit left over at the end, but overall, like, if you don't have red wine on hand or you don't want to buy red wine, you can just get this. It's all like two in one, and to me, this is way cheaper than just getting the beef broth alone, for example, or getting the red wine. And it just saves you a lot more time too. So I just usually use this whenever I make this stew here. Now I'm pretty much just, just pouring this, just like chucking it all in. It's all good. Once I put the beef broth in, I just give it like a quick stir. Sometimes like the onions and beef kind of leave like a sort of residue. So you want to scrape that up, make sure it's incorporated quite well with the soup. So give it a quick stir just to be sure. Right after that, I use rosemary, just based on the recipe here. Rosemary is definitely like essential to this, to this recipe. It tastes significantly better when you put herbs in it. I don't think I've ever made it without herbs, but I highly doubt it would taste good without the rosemary. So I poured it in, just about, I think, a teaspoon of it. I just kind of eyeballed it, 
I just poured it in and gave it a quick stir. And then after that, I decided to put the lid on. I think at that point afterwards, I decided to kind of put the heat on maximum so that way it cooks faster at a higher temperature and then what I do is I let it simmer after it boils up so after that I still have time to prepare my vegetables I got potatoes mushrooms and then I also have carrots as well and ginger so pretty much I am washing all the carrots here make sure there's no dirt or anything like that and also the potatoes as well. Make sure there's no like any any dirt on it at all. So I have noticed that people actually scrub their potatoes. So I don't know if, if it's for particular, if there's like dirt or something they want to scrub off. But normally I just give it a quick wash. I believe they are pre-washed already, so they're not as dirty. So it's it was a quick thing to do. After I place most of these little mini potatoes on the cutting board here I just cut them in quarters so it's much more easier to cook if the potato slices or cuts are much smaller in my opinion because the last thing I want to do is they're too big or I just put them in fully as it is and it doesn't cook all the way through like it should and it just takes even longer to make at some point while I was my cutting my potatoes here I forgot to open up the mushroom box, so I decided to do that and just kind of give them a quick clean. Mushrooms were a little bit dirty, but I mean, it is what it is. It's just a little bit dirt. It's not too bad. I clean them up, wash them up. At some point during the vegetable cutting, I completely forgot to make the rice. So I decided to kind of move this whole I guess colander on the counter with all the vegetables just to make room to clean the rice here. The little like pot part, all I had to do is give it a quick wash. It, it hasn't been used in a very long time. So I did that and then I decided to use about one, 1 1.5 cups. And that's the max that this little pot can take. So this rice cooker is actually a mini rice cooker. So I quickly put that in there, in the pot there. And then I just gave it a quick wash here and fill it up to the max line. Put in the rice cooker. There's a little switch that says warm and then cook. You switch that flip there and you kind of put it to the side and it just does everything for yourself. So like having a rice cooker is significantly easier. I think it tastes way better having it cooked in our rice cooker. Like I've had rice cooked in like a pot or someone actually used a frying pan and I'm like this this rice doesn't taste as good at least to me like I find that using the other methods just makes the rice even drier when it should be it should be moist it should be soft it should be delicious when you eat it with whatever that you have served after setting the rice cooker to cook the rice for the next 20 to half an hour I just continue with cutting the vegetables here, so I'm just cutting up the mushrooms here. Just like kind of cut them into four or five pieces. After that, the last part here was, it wasn't too bad, but I find that, you know, you have to do an additional step of carrots here. I just had to peel them, of course. Actually, before I started peeling the carrots here, I decided to take out a piece of ginger, of course, this is actually not part of the recipe, so this is an additional thing I added in the recipe just because ginger is really good for you and it's got a lot of benefits to it. This is something optional that you can do. This It doesn't really affect too much of the beef stew taste. I am making a big batch so you can't really tell, but having ginger in like soup or even like tea for example, it just has a warming feeling to it and having that extra kind of pizzazz, it makes things all the more tastier in my opinion. I decided to kind of cut it a little bit because it was too big of a piece and I just peeled it up and then I cut it up so that all the skin is completely off. There are people who actually throw in the ginger as it is, as in they just like wash it. They don't peel the skin and then they kind of toss it in their soup or whatever broth that they're using. I prefer having the skin off. It's not a huge deal if you put it with skin. After that ginger has been tossed into the soup, I decided to go in and just peel the carrots here. 
And then after that, I just kind of quickly chop them up into like little coins here. Nothing, nothing too fancy to be honest. I like doing this a lot, but I don't know if other people do the same thing as me, but I like to give it another rinse here. Make sure all there's no like debris or any dirt or anything like that on any of the vegetables that I cut up. So it's all good to go. I'll put it back on the cutting board. Eventually I realized that the tomato paste was missing. <laughs> so I had to open the can of tomato paste that was kind of like on the side here and then put about three tablespoons of tomato paste. And after that I just kind of make sure the tomato paste has been incorporated into the soup. And after that, I just kind of dump all the vegetables in there carefully, of course, there's a lot. I did not use any measurements for how many vegetables I need to put in. So I tend to be very loose with that. So mushrooms were not part of the recipe. I just wanted to get like a small box and I thought that was, that was fine. The carrots, I added one more additional carrot and then the potatoes I just kind of eyeballed it. I picked up a small bag of mini potatoes and found that it was fine. I believe like when it comes to herbs for example you got to be a little more careful. At this point about 40 minutes I put my vegetables in. So the reason why I did that so that the vegetables do not become soggy or overcooked. So that's something I do. I mean if you want to follow the recipe to a tea here that's just like a personal choice that I've done. After that, I put some cornstarch here. I think up a heaping amount, I think. I think about maybe four to five tablespoons of cornstarch. The issue was that it did not become thick enough. It ended up being just like a regular soup, which is, which is not the end of the world. It still tastes great at the end. Before the end time for the cooking, I added some frozen peas here, put the top on, make sure it cooks all the way through, open it up, and it looked great. And then the soup was done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. What I'll do is I'll add the link to the recipe. I have used this recipe for a few times now and it's been great so far. So hope you guys have a good night. I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.